Good afternoon and welcome to the Garden of Om. I'm going to do another book review. The four books I'm going to review now are about weeds, insects, and non-native species. I want to start with this one, Midwestern Native Shrubs and Trees, an illustrated guide by Charlotte Adelman and Bernard L. Schwartz. I must say I don't recommend this book. The reason is for instance, they give a long list of non-native plants, some of which I don't necessarily recognize, and then they'll give native alternatives without explaining the native versus non-native well enough for you to actually know if you're buying one at a nursery, especially if it has just a name like current on there, whether it's native or non-native. As you know, a lot of times if you buy a plant, especially at a big box store, it won't give you the true species name. So, it's, it's just not that good. I've tried to use it. I've tried to learn from it. It's got nice pictures. It's got pictures of butterflies. But I just don't think it's the best choice for you to learn about how to garden with native plants. And that's really the idea of why I'm collecting all these books, is, is to learn how to garden with native plants which is why I bought these two books as well over the years. I didn't buy all these at once, of course. Weeds of North America, Richard Dickinson and France Royer. And then Weeds of the Midwestern United States and Central Canada. Now, what's interesting about this book is that half the species listed in here are actually native species. I, in my, my philosophy is if it's native, it's not a weed. It may be troublesome. It may be in an area that I have trouble controlling. Um, I might not like the way it looks. It might, I might think it's too coarse or too tall or too short, but that's really more of a location. But I would not consider it a weed. Um, so, but the thing is that this book will tell you clearly habitat, habit, habitat, and origin right away under each plant description. So you can tell where it's from. It also gives very good pictures and it gives distribution. Of course, if it's a non-native plant, the distribution may well be wider. Um, Indian mustard and it is a native of Asia. It's all across North America, up into Canada, or all across the United States, up into Canada. Carolina geranium, for instance, not necessarily the prettiest plant, but that is a native. So that's one thing I don't like about the book is more the title, but the content is good, the layout is good, the photos are good, so it's still a useful book. But don't think of it necessarily as a book to use to identify that plant that's growing in your flower bed that you can't seem to get rid of. This one, weeds, so I do recommend this book. This book, Weeds of North America, I actually also recommend. They are really more talking about non-native invasive species. For instance, thistles. Anyone who has a garden or is interested in wild flowers has encountered numerous thistles, and frankly, I still, even with multiple books like this, can't generally identify one from another. But these pictures I think are excellent. The descriptions, they show the seed. And they also have generally reasons for concern about the plants, which is something that I don't see in this book and even in a little bit in here. But I would say for, this is probably the best. If you were going to buy one of these three, I would buy this one first, but I wouldn't not buy this eventually if you wanted to build your library. And this book is listed as $35, so I think that's a good deal for what you're getting. The quality of the pages, the quality of the print, the quality of the context. It's just an excellent, excellent book. Now, uh, this isn't necessarily talking about invasive bugs. It's just insects and it's wonderful. So I really do like this book. It shows aphids, for instance, which we've all seen, anyone who gardens. 
um, the different damages that you can expect from these little critters. So, when you look at this cover, you're like, okay, I like the cover, right? But inside, there is a lot of information. So, I would say this is definitely a book worth having for anyone who is a serious gardener. And this, I would recommend, not just for someone who is a wildflower gardener, but somebody who wanted to do butterfly gardening or vegetable gardening, or just spent a lot of time outside in their yard and was trying to identify what it was on the tree, on the grass, in the air. So this is actually a very good book. And this is $30. So again, um, you can buy a bestseller and read it and be done with it. Or you can buy Garden Insects of North America, The Ultimate Guide to Backyard Bugs by Whitney Cranshaw for the same price and have made a lifetime investment in learning. How's that? Anyway, so that's, those are my recommendations. These are my two strongest. This is a good backup book. And this one, I still must say, I seriously can't recommend. Anyway, thank you for watching. Thank you for your time. And I will have some more book reviews coming. Thank you. Bye.